What's up, Lowrider family? Welcome back to another episode on Lolos and More. Uh, before I talk about this, I want to say a quick thank you to John Adams for the sticker. He sent me a few stickers. Uh, remember, um, I'll put my my P.O. box down below. I got a new one than from what I had before. Um, remember, guys, if you got stickers of, of anything, if it's from your company or whatever you're running, you know, non-stress hydros from John Adams. Uh, so I can sticker bomb this toolbox and sticker bomb that. Probably sticker bomb that myself. You know, send it to me. Thank you for subscribing, John. So as we continue the video, you can see a rear end in front of me. A car rear end. Uh, so th this belongs to a good buddy of mine. I'm going to reinforce it. Um, so the things that I'm going to do to it. Um, let's see. My back hurts today. Okay. So one thing is I'm going to reinforce the ears. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a C channel from, from top of this part right here. Top of the pumpkin right here. Down by that bump stop right here. A little bit past right there. Same on this side. Right there. And um, for down below. So I started making the piece for the part down here. It did not work out great. Um, I was using a... Well, uh, it was a three inch by, um, I think it was eight inch or 10 inch tube that I cut in half and I was going to bend it. So I said nice and flush here, but I couldn't bend it here at, at my parents' place. So I took it to work. I did bend it, but it bend it the wrong way. So scratch that idea. Um, so what I did, I picked up some quarter inch thick flat bar and I'm going to make a box that way. So I'm going to do that. And the homeboy sent me over with some powder coat, um, stuff. So I'm going to powder coat the diff, powder coat the drums. I believe that's all he wanted, powder coated. I'll ask him again. So, and I'm not going to weld on the power balls. I'm going to do that last once the axle is on the car so i can make sure that the cylinders are sitting straight on this rear end um i'm gonna go ahead and remove the brake lines so i don't ruin anything i'm gonna go ahead and remove the e-brake cable because he's no longer gonna need that so uh let me remove that maybe do some cleaning um let's see what else i'm gonna go ahead and also remove the stock little spring mounts and i'm going to remove the bump stop brackets real quick and then once i get it cleaned up we'll come back and i'll show you what how it looks after I remove these two items from both sides and clean it up before we start welding today. Okay, well, let me do that and we'll be right back. All right, I got the rear end cleaned up where I wanted to. Here, all the way around. Same on this side, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld throw a big weld weed uh weed big big weld bead here all the way around same over there before i put the c chain on top on both sides so so now it's time to hit it with the grinder as you see i took off the brake the brake lines they were a pain to get off because they were really stuck on there um so I'm going to start, start grinding it down, getting rid of all these little knickknacks and the bump stop stuff. That's the next thing to do here. So, I guess let me grind away and then I'll show you what I got to do next. 
when I'm grinding stuff that's rusty, I'll normally wear a uh, respirator because it's rust and you don't want to inhale that. Because people say it's like inhaling cancer in a way. So I'm always wearing a respirator when dealing with rust because you don't want to inhale that crap. Let me grind and I'll be right back. So I got um, everything grinded down that has to go. All of it. So what I'm going to do now is hit it with the flat wheel. And pretty much make it nice and clean. All the way around on the tubes only. Only on the tubes. So I'm going to do that. Real quick. And then um, I also cleaned it up underneath here. And over there, so when it's time to reinforce the bottom, I can go ahead and weld because it's ready. So I'm just going to clean this up with the flat wheel. And for some of you guys that don't know what a flat wheel is, it's like a sanding disc, but for a grinder. There's multiple grits. This one's a 240 grit. So... I'm going to hit it with probably a 50, uh, uh, an 80 or a 60. And then I'll be ready to make a few measurements, cut the C-channel. And then uh, start forming it so it can sit on top of this. Alright, so let me do that and we'll be right back. Alright, so I started doing some welding before I start. Uh cutting up the c-channel to make it fit on top of the axle so I'm gonna gr clean up the wheel I did already both sides See that? Got to weld it on. Nice on there. I did it already all the way around. So, and remember, if you're part of a car club and you're, um, you know, chapter president says you can't weld or can't build your car. And you're joining the wrong club. Your club residents should be able to help you out building your car and welding instead of having someone else do it. You know. So remember, guys, if you're uh, low riding for your first time, don't just go with anybody. Make sure you know their history and if they can build cars and they can weld really well. I know they can probably be better as in rounder, but but inconsistency. There we go. So let me flip it back around. I'm going to go ahead and start making some cuts on that. And before I weld it, I'll show you guys what I did. Alright, so I was going to start forming cutting edges on the c-channel to put it over the start of the pumpkin out here but i can't do it on this one um i did another axle that was bigger than the g-body axles and i was able to fit it grind it down to where i'm over the pumpkin right there at least you know a good half an inch or a quarter inch over and i was able to go over the rest of the axle without having to have this issue um, where the say channel sitting at an angle you know um, even though after I do my cuts it's still gonna sit at an angle because if you pay attention that lip is just literally right there so we can't really do much so 
I'm gonna go ahead, weld this up, uh, both sides where they're at. I'm gonna level them, and so you guys know, I am going to use um, this plate right here. This plate right here to uh, use as a level. So that way, these things right here are are centered That's when I weld them. So I'm going to do that. And then I think the next thing I'm going to do is reinforce the ears. If I have the metal, I'm pretty sure I have it somewhere back in there. That'll be the next thing right after this. And then the last thing would be to do the bottom part. So let me uh, take care of this. Weld it completely. And, and then uh, we'll be right back. Uh, just before I weld everything on, I already tacked it together, both sides. They're both tacked on. So, and I just use a little level to help me get it leveled. I first got the axle leveled, and then I got it straight up and down leveled. And then, then, then the C-channel is leveled. So, alright, so I'm about to weld it all up together. Let's get to it. Okay, got the top pieces all welded up along with the ears. Nice and welded. There we go. So these pieces up here, these are five inch long by a quarter inch thick. And then these pieces, I cut them to 17 and a quarter inch. On both sides so uh, the last part we got to do is the bottom piece for the bottom piece we're gonna use that because uh, I forgot to buy flat metal so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that um, or I might go buy some flat metal make it easier I don't know so um, I'm gonna clean up and we'll get started on the last piece. All right, everybody. So I'm here now at this stage of the rear end enforce reinforcement. I can tell you right now that today is not my day. I hate today. So one thing is um, when you're reinforcing the bottom end of the, of the rear end, when you get to that part, to this part right here, Make sure you weld, um, so, uh, you use solid steel wi welding wire with uh, a gas additive, which is argon or, uh, you know, I think some people use CO2. But like I said before, I'm not a welding expert. So, but yeah, I got my 2575 bottle back there. Um, I bought a new regulator because mine was broken. Uh, and the thing is, when I went to hook up my hose, it was it had the wrong uh, fitting. So I went to the store, to the welding store. I took my regulator and this hose. They gave me a fitting, and that damn fitting didn't fit my new regulator. Like they said it would. So that pissed me off. So, another thing that pissed me off because uh, I am short on those ends right there. I'm a um, half inch short on each side. Um, when you make, when you cut this out, make sure you cut it out to be um, from touching the trailing arm mount to the other trailing arm mount. But since we're doing the C channel on the other side of the axle. I don't, I don't have any worries about it. This is okay. So this is where I'm going to stop for today. Um, I was going to make the supports that go in between this flat bar and the axle, but I'll do that next time because that, that's really that's simple and quick thing to do. Um, I already went ahead and made my templates for both sides of the axle to cut out the plates 
out of there right there quarter inch thick some I made mine out of cardboard so yeah um it's like like I said before the homeboy wants chrome powder coated drums so those are in the making right now they got about 10 minutes left before they're done but uh yeah I don't mean to upset you guys cause I I didn't want to do a, a a video in parts I wanted to do it in one video cause sometimes as you guys can tell I, I don't always get to the rest of it but I will assure you part two we will finish this part you'll see part two one week after I drop this video I promise you that so in the next video I'm cutting out the plates and making the supports for this axle so oh and um, I did cut out a notch on the axle I um, mean on the um, on the flat bar oh this flat bar is quarter inch thick so it was not easy to get it to bend like that so I mean in, I mean I guess we're almost done I mean the plates are quick and easy to to make but the reason why I said you make sure you use solid wire and a gas additive when you're welding the reinforcement part is you don't want that sucker to fall off when you're driving trust me you don't I've seen it happen it's embarrassing so don't do it make sure you always have solid wire and gas with your welder um, unless you're not doing that then you can stay with the flux so uh, and I did do flux wire with the C channel that is not coming off it's not breaking off because I know my welds um, so, I mean, you can build a whole car on flux core wire, no doubt. I mean, it'll work. So, yeah, sorry to disappoint you guys, but I know I did say I was going to upload a video. So, hopefully you guys don't hate me. I'm going to do some cleaning up, get rid of some of this crap, and uh, I'll show you how the drums came out when they're done, and, and I'll be it for today. So see you guys here in a minute. All right, everybody. So I'm not sure where we left off, but uh, I'm pretty much ready to weld this entire thing together now. Um, I have all my plates cut out. I just need to grind them a little bit because uh, when you cut out your pieces, you don't want to start welding them onto whatever you're working on. Looking like this, because uh, this is like a uh you won't make good contact let's just say that you won't make good contact with your weld if you're welding on top of that so i got all my plates my front and my rear i got my little supports will uh cut out fit perfect right there and another one for the other side so uh when i have took the diff cover off because i had to take the axles out to take off the backing plates off um I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to put the cover back on. But for those that are probably wondering, how do they get that flush look up to the pumpkin? Well, people will literally weld to the pumpkin to the edge right here. And, uh, um, and when, once they're done welding in this area, they'll go back and take a, a flat wheel. And sand down the weld, make sure making sure that this surface is flat to put the cover back on with a gasket maker. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and weld the insides up completely right now, the the support tabs, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and tack up the front and back sides, and then I'll show you how it looks before I start welding everything together. So, uh, we'll be right back. Plus, I got to do a little bit more 
um, cleaning up. I started grinding down the welds so I can make a flesh, uh, flush weld right here. Um, real quick before I go away. Usually people make their plates up to this right here. But I'm only doing it to right here. Alright, so I got it all tacked together. I kind of started a little bit of welding here and there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now get started on welding it up together. I already welded in the supports, the supports on the inside on both sides. So now it's just welding it up. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on so no more welding debris gets in there. But if but if you guys do end up getting debris in there, you guys can flush it out with oil. Put used oil in there. It'll flush it out and make sure you drain it out before putting the cap back on and the new oil in. So, I guess let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and start welding up. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes. So, I know there's some pretty big spots to fill. Which I'll be pretty good at filling that in. Um, but then just remember this is like a beginner on on axles you can say you know, I haven't done my first axle was many many years ago but it was a truck axle not a G body axle so um, it's not going to look completely pretty but with my finishing welds on the top and then I'm going to mold this part right here so uh let's see how it goes i'm gonna get to it i'll be back once i'm probably done welding up one side before i go on to the other side all right be right back all right <clears throat> i think this is where i'm going to end the video for reinforcing the axle um uh, for a geobody um it can be for a lot of different axles actually um, I ran out of gas for my welder, so I'm stuck where I'm at right now. I know I said I was going to go ahead and show you guys how it looked all tacked up. But I just went ahead and started welding up everything because I'm busy. And and, and there's a reason why you guys haven't been seeing that many videos of, of how-tos and stuff. Um, but to make up for it, after I'm done uploading this video that you guys are watching right now i'm gonna upload another one the following day for you guys it's because it's gonna be another quick one um as you guys can see after i welded up all my panels into place you can see where i had gas and ran out of gas it wasn't until i took off my helmet and then i saw that so I'm going to have to grind those welds down a little bit more after I get gas and then weld on top of that. So, uh, a recap of what we've done um, and what we put on was we put 316 inch um, flat bar on these ears right here. So, they stay reinforced because they tend to break usually right in this area right here. And then on the C channel, it's a quarter inch thick, three inch wide C channel. And um, let me see. And then this is quarter inch steel right here on all four sides. And then the bottom arch, including those braces that I put inside of the reinforcement where we're boxing it off. It's all quarter inch by three inch flat bar so that's what I've done so far um that's for the pretty much the recap of the axle there is different ways to put this material down onto the axle like for example um now that I have uh, I have the uh the brake uh, backing plates off you can actually run this piece of channel from here all the way to this and weld it straight to this piece right here you can do that um, like what I was trying to say for the hoppers if you try to hop your car I do recommend you come all the way out with the material to this 
um, and weld it up to this backing plate along with this plate. Bring it up all the way out here, the front one if, as well, if you could, and weld it here to this backing plate. That's if, like, straight up hopper, you're going to have more than 12 batteries in the back of your trunk. You're going to have some weight. That's where I recommend it. But if you're trying to do a nice street hopper, this is a good setup right here. Um, you don't have to go all radical. No, this is good right here. Um, but in different ways that people do um, their reinforcement, I kind of did a little artsy thing for you real quick. What a lot of people do, they'll just take square tubing and they'll literally just do this and call it good. Some square tubing and call it good. Um, sometimes they'll go ahead and put plates here and they'll fill it in. That's what they'll do. Um, or they'll do what I did. First, uh, you take your big piece of flat bar you bend it like that you put your braces in like I did and then you fill in the that with the caps um, with the quarter inch metal or you can take a piece of uh, uh, rectangle tubing cut it in half and if you're able to get it to bend and you have a nice solid piece just for the bottom. And that's pretty much it. For the top, you know, a lot of guys, they'll take a little piece of C-channel and weld their power balls to that. Like that. Or you can do what I did. Take a piece of C-channel, run it over. And put, weld your power ball on it and you're good. Um... But uh, in any case, I, I, um, when you guys are building your lowrider, I say go ahead, spend an extra few bucks, make this piece as big as I did, or bigger if you could, because I know right here, if you do not take off your backing plate, there's going to be the, um, the, uh, the brake line connection right here, and it's in a way, so that's why I didn't go all the way out here. But... It's fine. It's, it's good. It's solid the way it is right now. But yeah, I just recommend just do one big solid piece of C channel all the way across if you could. If you want to do it that way. Um, so instead of just having this little piece of a C channel from here to here to hold, put to mount your uh, power balls, you know what I mean. So that's it for today's video. Um, like I promise, I'm going to uh, drop another video the next day for you guys. I normally don't do that, but oh well. I got to make it up for you guys. Because some of you guys have been waiting on how-tos and stuff. But this is one of those deals. Um, like I said earlier in the video, when you're reinforcing an axle, make sure you use um, steel wiring with a gas additive to it don't just use um a flux core wire because it'll it'll break off so um trust me i did that a long long time ago and then uh i went to the store and on my rear end the reinforcement that i put on fell off and then i was told well it's because you used the uh, flux core wire not supposed to do that you know all right Cool. I mean, that's when I knew nothing. So, little by little, you learn things. So, that's it for the video. Hopefully, you guys liked it. If you didn't, I don't blame you because I didn't really do too much and show you too much. I went ahead and pull it all up. Well, I tried to since I ran out of gas. But, uh, hopefully, everybody's doing okay out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And, by the way, I got a new different P.O. box. You'll see it down here. All right. Peace.